We begin tonight at 6 with the latest on the TPC explosions. Jefferson County officials as well as the Unified Command Center are reassuring residents they are safe and giving an update on the latest information. Here's what we know right now. A member of the U.S. Chemical Safety Board says specific event that triggered the TPC explosion still has not yet been determined. But workers at the plant say they noticed a vapor cloud before the blast. And this morning, responders closed a leaking pressure valve, which they say was a source of elevate, elevated butadiene readings. Air monitoring immediately shows significant reduction of butadiene levels once it was closed. Right now, the voluntary evacuation order has been lifted, as well as a shelter in place for all residents. And developing the explosions and fire at TPC have prompted an investigation by the U.S. Chemical Safety Board. CSB and local officials now sharing information on the ongoing deployment. KFDM's Joy Addison was at today's news conference and joins us now in the studio. Joy, what caused last night's voluntary evacuation? Greg, the on-site fires that were burning chemicals like the primary constituent butadiene have been put out, allowing, allowing a more purified level of the chemical to seep into the atmosphere. Toxicologists say the levels measure 0.23 ppm. This is considered non-harmful to humans. Asbestos has not been reported. Inhibitors are being added to the on-site tanks that currently hold these chemicals to avoid reactions within the tanks until they are transported to an off-site location that's still being decided. Toxicologists say resident reports of sickness or irritation are possibly from sensory response rather than tox toxicity response. TPC has not yet identified any preliminary identification of fundamental failure. Sensory irritation is what it's called, sensory irritation. And essentially, you can get a headache just based on the odor itself, not based on any kind of toxicity response. A chemical safety board member says workers at the plant noticed a vapor cloud before the explosion and fire. The investigation could take up to one year to determine a cause. Officials say it could take weeks for the on-site chemicals to be transported to an off-site location. Greg? All right, Joy, thanks. Happening now, many Port Natchez residents are back home tonight after being given involuntary evacuation orders while others never left, choosing to shelter in place. KFTM's Tan Radford joins us live now near the plant. Tan, why did some residents uh, decide to stay? Greg, multiple explosions and now multiple evacuations. Those sheltering in place tell me they had no fear of the butadiene levels coming from this TPC plant. Wednesday night, thousands in Port Natchez were given the option to evacuate or shelter in place after levels of 1,3 butadiene increased at the TPC plant. I worked in a chemical plant, so it doesn't scare me. B.C. Clemens chose to shelter in place while TPC workers began to get the levels under control. We evacuated the first time and at 10 o'clock last night it was too late for us to do much of anything and we didn't smell anything so we stayed. Clemens lives near Miramin, one of the three streets where the highest levels of butadiene were detected. Other streets included were Earl Street and Saybrook Lane. Well, of course you don't want it in your neighborhood but it's not going to be anything that's going to be a lasting you know, lasting problem. So, you know, I, I'm going about my business right now. Thursday morning, TPC staff were able to reduce levels to non-irritating amounts. The voluntary evacuation lifted. Well, I think they're doing the best they can do. You know, nobody likes it, but it, it's never, never happened before. We've been here 20 something years. And TPC is monitoring the air quality in the area and residents are safe in their home as of now. Live in Port Natchez, I'm Tan Radford, KFDM 6 News. Well, the week